down, 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 down. That's it. Looking at the computer, you can see my track coming down the yellow line, and we're, we're kind of headed uh, southwest, uh, which is not too good. Uh, we're um, past six degrees, that's 620 just here, I think, going down, and the Marquesas is at about nine. And an overall view, try to hold the camera steady for you. Looks like a blank screen, but that's us here. That's 2,000 miles, and there's the Marquesas Islands. And down here we have the Gambia Islands and Pitcan Island, which was the bounty, the island where the bounty, uh, mutiny on the bounty happened. I was thinking of going down that way, but there's nothing much there. And um, it's another 800 miles to get up to here, which is more sort of civilization, there's Wi Fi and things and I, so I'm, I'm heading there but we keep going this way and I need to go almost directly west and I'm having trouble doing that at the moment you can see there we still got a bit of uh, bounce in the, in the sea it's coming up uh, we haven't had any in the cockpit for a while we've got a couple of big ones came in last night and but yeah because of the bouncing the boat won't steer a, a direct course downwind I've also jibed a few times, I think five times now. Uh, the wind gets around the back of the sail there and flips it across with an almighty bang. Not a good thing. You can see one of the two spinnaker poles attached to the front of the boat up there. I think the plan may involve uh, the use of one or both of those. It's day 34, I'm still, oh. <laughs> do you feel my pain, do you feel my pain really, really, I got pain, I got pain, yeah. nothing's working properly, I got pain, I'm in the middle of nowhere, help me please, <laughs> send help now. Um, yes, yeah, day 34. Uh, and I've uh, changed the uh, sail configuration this morning. It took me three hours. Um, I got the mainsail back up. I had the mainsail down. Uh, she's now back up. We were doing like one and a half, 1.7, two knots overnight. Did 55 miles yesterday. And every other day has been 66, something like that. That's uh, every 24 hours. It's very, very bad. We should be doing nearly three times that. There's room to put out more of the foresail, but uh, she keeps backing uh, on herself uh, and makes a hell of a bang when she does do. So uh, to say wear and tear and everything, I've got to like that. And, and putting more sail out doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go faster there. You can see that happening there. Um, yeah, t two reefs in the main, or uh, no, one actually, one reef in the main. It took me a while to get that up, but I tell you, it was hard going. It's been a hard old trip on Shaddy. There's bits tearing and wearing out. Bits of stitching coming out up here, look. Some of that's all coming apart. Um, the whole bimini needs to be redone. And there's Wilson. He's looking after the computer. He's doing navigation today. All right, Wilson? Good morning. Another day in the life of a solo sailor that happens to be in the middle of the Pacific, 2,000 miles from anywhere. Last night, uh, the wind came up. Um, I had too much sail up. I, I, uh, I put a, a reef in, but couldn't manage to get the boat to sail. I couldn't control the boat. Um, it, she kept rounding up no matter what I did. I tried everything I could think of, and she just kept rounding up into the wind. Again, I think possibly because of the swell, just kept knocking her around. Um, and then the, 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 the trim would go wrong and then she'd just take off. So um, I'm, having, whoop, I'm having coffee this morning um, and um, <laughs> out of all the parts of my body that rule me, my, my bum does. I'm sorry, I have to tell you this. I just have to tell somebody. You know, when I have to go in the mornings, I have to go uh, use the bucket, as you might uh, say. Um, <laughs> so I had to do that first. I had a lentil stew last night, so that might be very interesting. Because uh, when I do these things, inevitably it's going to take me a couple hours. I got to, I'm going to drop the sail. I'm going to do stuff. I'm going to try a trick that I did years ago and see if that works. But it might take me a few hours on deck. Uh, so I want to make sure I've got everything done 
my morning uh, bits and pieces done before I set off and do stuff. So coffee and um, uh, bucket. <laughs> I just had to tell you that. I've done this enough times in the past from the uh, quietness and comfort of the saloon to the, uh, the violence of the day up here. It's a beautiful morning, kind of doing a live camera type thing here. Um, behind me you can see the sun's just come up. Um, due to the noise, it is blowy, 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 very swelly, the boat's bouncing all over the place. Um, Although old Hydro up there, not Hydro, uh, well he's, he's, not, he's not been able to do any work last night. It was just too much for him. But Turby up there, the turbine, he's making lots of electricity because it's so windy. Pretty awful really. It, the sea is what's killing it for me. It's just bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Uh, the deck, got the mainsail up. That jibed again this morning. This is this is what's frightening me. This I got I got most of the mainsail up and it bang went. I I took the uh, foresail in and tried to run it out on the pole to bring the weather behind us, and I got it wrong. And uh, the boat went over too quickly and um, and jived. I'm going to put the foresail up and go downwind with the foresail. I'm going to try that and see what happens there. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, <laughs> it's, it, it's, uh, it's very, very bouncy. Um, no, so I'm having my coffee <laughs> and I'm hoping that we haven't gone too far out of the way uh, of where we should be. Uh, we're still a long, 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 long way. But all this wind, I need to make use of it. So onward. I won't film the next bit because there'll be lots of swearing and cussing. Up here this morning looking at the damage uh, to the foresail. Um, you can see there there's the ring uh, that's stitched into the sail uh, that takes the sheet lines and there's three strops, uh, reinforcing strops and there's one that's just completely come off there. So if you look that the top part of the ring uh, is, is free. So there's only these, these two strops at the side here holding the ring on. That's not good. If one of those two other strops goes, that ring comes off. I've no way to fix uh, the ropes to the sail and we won't be able to use the sail. So I have to be careful with her. I put her away last night. Oh dear. The weather now is finally, finally, finally calming down. Uh, it's still a bit of swell, but it is the ocean after all. But uh, this morning it was difficult getting the boat balanced so she'd sail. Um, you can see I've taken one of the sails down, just the big Genoa is up at the moment. You can see the main sail is all uh, stashed and tied down and it's finally the weather to come up to the front of the boat and do an inspection. As you can see uh, we've got rust, rust, rust everywhere. What I am worried about is the forestay which is inside all this 
uh, that holds the foresail all together and the roller reefing and I couldn't get it apart to inspect it the last time I did an inspection and uh, all this coupling down here is a weak point and the bottom there's a pin uh, that needs to be uh, replaced and uh, uh, the, the safety pin that goes through it is looking a bit not good so uh, yeah that's a bit of a worry. Give you an update this morning. Uh, it's now day 44. Uh, I uh, I've been having a lot of problems keeping the boat sailing in a straight line. Um, it's wobbly this morning. It was bad last night. We lay a hull, which is basically parking the boat up. Um, so we kind of stopped just for the night, and we would. We were sort of half sailing about one or two knots in something like the right direction. And, uh, we've had all this swell running through, going west where I want to be, and uh, it just keeps turning me up and pressing me up against this swell sideways on. And uh, I have a hell of a time keeping the boat going downwind. It's, it's the weirdest thing. You'd think the boat would just go downwind, but she tended to keep coming sailing and turning upwind and sticking herself to the front of these waves, uh, which is what we're doing now. We're actually pretty much stopped across the waves. Day 44, I should be in uh, six days completing my passage. 50 days is what I told my people on shore. I still have 1,300 miles to go. I have no way I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna be two weeks late at least. And I don't seem to be getting any nearer. It's very, very frustrating, this whole thing is so frustrating this weather has been appalling for the last few days we've actually had enough wind to sail because the problem is the sea is so powerful i need a powerful wind to drive through it and i haven't had that now i have i was thinking of the guy uh, donald crowhurst who uh, sailed his boat tinmoth electron uh, in the golden globe race back in the 1960s and he faked his uh, passage because he he went mental. He, he lost it and ended up just stepping off the back of his boat. At least I think that's what happened. There's been a couple of movies uh, made of it recently. It's a story I know well. Um, it's um, the Golden Globe, Globe Race uh, from 1960s that sort of set the mold for this kind of thing that I do now, solo 
solo voyaging in a yacht. But yeah, but I can understand in situations like this where everything's frustrating, you can't, you, you try again and again and again and again to, to get somewhere and you're just trying and trying and trying. And it's like there's a, there's a, the hand of God or there's fates or something who are just trying to screw you up and everything you do keeps not going wrong but it's very hard to get anything done and like this passage now I've had the weather it's just bit my, my friends did this passage for 37 days before me I'm now in my 44th day and I still have just under one and a half thousand miles to go I, it's just and I'm averaging like two knots it's just unbelievably bad that the, the bad luck that I've had with weather everything's been thrown at me to stop me uh, get a, mostly just this powerful sea with not enough wind to drive over it so uh, you can understand when people go mad and if you've got a bit of a problem this sort of situation will amplify it big time I mean really will I mean you're by yourself out here all the devils come and sit on your shoulder and you whisper nasty things in your ear it really does I was listening to voices down there last night and I'm not the only solo sailor to say that you can hear voices at night <laughs> when you get very tired people the dead come and talk to you no, no, no. I'm not kidding either whoa yeah so anyway I'm okay though I'm, I'm made of strong stuff I'm gonna pull myself together get on that king helm and try and get this king boat to the French Polynesia because if I don't I'm gonna die out here. Well, first things first, another coffee, eh? You, not the poo. Is that too much for you, that sun? <laughs> I'll change this around to here, I think. Oh, it's a biggie there. Good. Whoa, biggie went through then. Oh, you, you get the idea of what it's like. 